All right, folks. Well, welcome. I want to, uh, obviously, I think most of you probably know who I am, Nick. Um, I've been doing these for a few months now, but we are not going to have Jeff or Tristan, uh, at least for the first portion of the webinar today. So you're mostly dealing with me. I think that's probably normal. You do hear mostly from me on these, but I don't normally get things started. So I just want to say welcome. Thank you for joining me today. Um, as always, we do ask you to let us know where you're coming from. So what part of the country are you from? Or if you're from you know, somewhere outside of the U.S., that's always fun to see where our international viewers are from on these webinars. So if you want to go ahead and let us know in the chat you know, where you're coming from today, um, I'd be excited to see that. And then uh, just kind of a personal uh, interest here, because we're going to be talking all about Zoom. So we obviously are on Zoom right now. Um, we use Zoom throughout our business lives. Uh, if you're like me, you probably use it multiple times a day. So I'm going to be showing you a lot of cool tips and tricks and kind of the different settings and how you should set up uh, for a Zoom call. But I'm curious, what are some of the problems that you've run into or maybe some of the questions that you have about Zoom? Since it's just me today, uh, we've got a little bit more kind of back and forth. Uh, I'd be happy to answer a few extra questions. I think we will have a little bit more time than normal. Um, but yeah, I'm curious, you know, what are some of, and, and I guess in particular, like what are some of the frustrations that you've had with Zoom? So what is maybe something that's happened that you didn't know how to fix um, or something you were trying to do, but you couldn't figure out how to do it? Like that kind of stuff would be really interesting to hear. Um, and if we have some time, you know, maybe we'll try to address a couple of those questions specifically. Obviously, as we're going through all of the stuff we're covering today, there's a good chance you're going to get an answer to that question um, kind of inadvertently from what we're all covering here today. So I'm going to give it another, you know, I'll give it one, one to two more minutes to let a few more people hop on here. It seems like we've got about 100 on here on the Zoom end already at this point. So thank you so much for joining us. Um, if you did just jump on, it is just me, Nick Niehaus, with you today. Uh, Jeff is out of town, and Tristan, I think, is going to try to join us about halfway through. Um, but that does mean that we have a little bit more flexibility than normal. So if you do have any questions um, that you normally wouldn't be able to get in, you know, we might be able to cover them today. We are talking all about Zoom. So again, um, I was asking you if you have any issues, uh, what kind of issues do you run into with Zoom? All right, so I'm going to check the... Uh, Ended up in Zoom with an animal logo. Okay, that's an interesting one. Um, how to get how to get leads comfortable using Zoom. Okay, so kind of how do you get other people a little more accustomed to using Zoom itself? Uh, looks like people have tr trouble with audio on video. So that is something I can uh, show you today. So that's one we can definitely answer. Uh, using a tablet, seem to have less access to all the features. Okay, yep, so if you're on a tablet, you're probably going to be on the mobile app, which does work a little bit differently. We'll see if we might be able to have it, uh, some, some a chance to adjust that. Uh, time limitations, okay, so that's going to be based on your, your free account. Um, and then, yeah, the difference between paid and Zoom, paid Zoom account and the free account. Cool, so continue to ask those questions. Bring them in as you have them. I am going to go ahead and share my screen and we can get our presentation started. But what I'll try to do, um, normally, if you've been on these before, you know that we have an opportunity to have uh, Jeff or Tristan kind of feed me the questions as they come in. Um, so what we'll do is, is we'll change it up a little bit here. Um, as we're going, if uh, you have questions, make sure you put them into the chat or the Q&A. I will make sure to check both of those. Um, and I will try to just kind of keep up with those questions. So there may be a point or two where I have to kind of pause, um, check the questions, answer a few, and then come back to the presentation. So let's go ahead and dive straight in here. So what we are going to be talking about today is Zoom, right? So if you're, if you're like me, you're using a lot of Zoom in your life at this point. It's probably a pretty regular part of your business. And so there are some of the basics, which I'm sure pretty much everybody has figured out how to use at this point. Um, and then there's a whole bunch of other stuff. And actually, um, I've been using Zoom now for a few years, but what I've found is that Zoom is constantly changing, right? So it started out as a really rudimentary, basic tool, um, and there has been a lot of additional features, there's a lot of additional kind of bells and whistles, so to speak, and they can be kind of overwhelming, right? So what we wanted to do today is just sort of walk you through some of those settings, some of those controls, help you understand what they each do, maybe give you some examples of where you should use them, right? So on the left-hand side of the screen, um, as always, we have kind of a, a quick summary of the webinar today, so you know what you're going to get. We're going to talk about settings that will enhance the quality and experience of your Zoom meeting. We're going to demonstrate some of those important Zoom features, so actually show you where to find some of these things, uh, what buttons to click on, all that kind of stuff. I'm going to give you some lighting and audio tips for your meetings, right? 
Um, so help you feel a little bit more confident and comfortable while you're doing a Zoom call, right? So that you feel that much better about what you're delivering on camera. Um, we're gonna talk about how to frame yourself correctly. So this is one uh, that, I, that I'll ask you about when we get to that slide, but um, it drives me nuts when somebody is like way all over the place in the frame when you're trying to watch them, right? So they're way too low or their, their head's cut off or um, I've, I've seen actually several Zooms where all I could see was the person's forehead. So obviously that's not good. Uh, so we'll talk about kind of what, you know, framing you should have, where should you be in the frame, all that kind of stuff. And then fi finally, um, some quick tips on connect, you're testing your internet connection. Now on the right hand side of the screen, what we're trying to do in these webinars is also give you just a little bit of a sample, a little bit of a tease of what you would experience if you were in our business video school training program. Um, so we actually have a three part series that we're right in the middle of right now that covers Zoom. So some of what we're covering today kind of scratches the surface. And then if you want to do a deep dive, you want to get into more of the um, you know, further kind of getting into the, 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 the settings and things like that. If you want to get into some of the strategy behind Zoom, you want to kind of come up with other ways you could be using this tool in your business, uh, that we would highly recommend attending those sessions in the school. So we will talk if we have a little time about the Business Video School at the end of this training, um, but I just wanted to mention that before we go ahead and dive in here today, all right? So let's talk about, you know, for those of you that maybe are a little bit newer to Zoom, let's talk about what you can do with Zoom as a tool, all right? So there's a whole bunch of different settings that you're going to see that you can control within Zoom itself, right? Um, the first thing you can do is you can host meetings. Now with a free account, you can host a meeting of up to 100 people with a 40 minute limit uh, on the meeting time, right? So I already saw that there was a question earlier about how long can you go? Um, how long is a Zoom meeting, right? And that would only be an issue if you have a free account. If you have a paid account, you can actually do meetings for up to 24 hours. I really don't know why you would want to do a 24 hour meeting. That sounds absolutely terrible, right? Um, but it is possible, right? So if you have a paid account, you're going to be able to do meetings that are longer than that, but you can do up to 40 minutes without a paid account um, with up to 100 people, which I think is pretty generous on Zoom's part. That's pretty cool. Now, if you go for the paid account, you can do additional things, right? So for instance, you can host webinars. Uh, a webinar is what we're doing right now, right? So this kind of a format is a webinar that is a little bit different than a meeting, which means that your participants do not have their cameras or their microphones turned on, right? So they can communicate with you just just like you're doing today through the chat and through those means of communication, um, but they cannot actually turn their camera on, right? So that's one of the big differences between a webinar and a meeting. And then finally on the paid account, you can also record videos. So I've seen people starting to use that feature uh, more and more over time. And actually, as you know, we always record uh, these Zoom presentations as well. So that is a really cool feature. Um, but some people are actually recording things using Zoom that is never streamed, right? So they're basically just getting on and they're having a one-on-one -on -one conversation. They're doing kind of an interview style video and they're recording it using Zoom, um, but they're not actually broadcasting it. So that is an interesting aspect of Zoom is that you can record the meetings or the webinars that you're hosting, all right? Now here's the first kind of getting into um, some of the settings, some of the stuff that you can be using here. Once I get through this slide, I think I'll pause and take a second to answer some of the questions because I do see quite a few of those coming in here. Um, but there's a few settings that I want to cover, right? Now, if we have time at the end of this webinar today, I will go into the actual Zoom settings and I'll go through and I'll show you where all of the buttons that you click on are for this, right? But for the purposes of what we're doing, I'm just going to run through these really quickly because we do have a lot to cover. As you go into your settings, right? So if you log into your Zoom account, you're gonna see on the left-hand side, you've got your meetings, you got your webinar, you also have your settings option. What you're gonna to wanna to do is go into your settings, and if you scroll through, you'll find each and every single one of these different settings. And this is stuff that you can control before you ever schedule a meeting or a webinar, right? So this is stuff you're gonna be controlling in advance of actually turning on a Zoom meeting, right? So a few things you can do. Number one is that you can require a password, all right? Now I would prefer, I would actually really recommend that you do not require a password, all right? 
Now, you can require a password if you want more security, but the problem is if you have a password, then people have to remember the password, they have to save it somewhere, you're gonna create headaches, right? You're gonna create a situation where people are reaching out at the last second, asking for the password because they can't get onto the meeting um, or the webinar, right? So I would personally recommend, unless you are specifically concerned about security, if you're gonna be discussing things that are maybe a sensitive topic, in most cases, I would not require a password because it's just gonna make things more confusing and it's gonna be that much harder harder to get on, right? Now, if you're doing a meeting, you may want to turn on what's called a waiting room, all right? So a waiting room is going to be the fact that when people first join the meeting, they are not automatically allowed to enter that meeting. They're going to be held in a separate room and you have to admit them one at a time, right? Now you can, there's a button you can click that just admits everybody who's in the waiting room all at once and that's fine, right? But what that does is it means that you're not going to accidentally have people that jump on the meeting ahead of time and are talking to each other, right? You're not going to have a situation where um, one or two people are on there in advance and then you show up and they're already in the meeting, they're already having a conversation. Maybe they even start the meeting without you because they're confused about how things are supposed to work. So a waiting room can be really useful so that you can have everybody enter the meeting right at the exact same moment, um, but that they know the meeting is going to start on time, right? So that's a nice feature. Um, another one is you can turn the participants, sorry, the participants video on or off, right? So this is one you have to think about. When people first enter the meeting, you can have it set up when you schedule the meeting so that their cameras are turned on or off, right? The same thing goes for their audio. Now, you probably want to, just to be safe in most cases, have the camera turned off when the meeting starts, right? Some people don't realize um, that this stuff happens, and so they might actually be doing something in front of the camera uh, that they maybe shouldn't be doing, and so if you have the camera defaulted to turning on, you're going to run into that potential issue. Now, that being said, there's the other side of the coin, so to speak, which is that some people have a lot of trouble with any settings. You might say, hey, push the button in the bottom left corner of the screen, and they still will not be able to find it. So in that case, if you're dealing with people that are a little bit less technologically savvy, you may want to have that stuff turned on, right? You actually might want to have the meeting participants, cameras, and audio defaulted to turning on as soon as they join the meeting because that's going to skip steps, right? They're more likely to simply join and have everything in the right place, right? So especially if you're dealing with somebody um, who's maybe a little bit older, maybe has a little bit of a tough time with technology, maybe go ahead and leave that one turned on so that they automatically have their camera turned on and you don't have to explain to them how to figure out how to do it, right? Um, another one that's really cool here is you actually can have a personal meeting ID. Now you'll see within Zoom, if you go to the meeting section, on the top there you're going to see uh, you know, your upcoming meetings, you're going to have your, your previous meetings, and you're going to have your personal meeting if you have this turned on. And what's cool about the personal meeting ID is it creates a dedicated room that's just your personal room that people can join at any time. So if you have recurring meetings, if you have people that you meet with on a regular schedule, um, or people that you're meeting with multiple times a week, you may want to have this personal meeting room ID, which they can use over and over again. Anytime they use that ID, they're always joining the exact same room, and it's a room that exists at any time. Now, you still have to start the meeting, so if you don't start a meeting, they don't necessarily get together and, and have a meeting in your room without you, but it does give you something where you're not having to constantly invite people to a new meeting. Once they have that ID, they just have to put it in and they'll be able to join your meeting room at any time, right? So that's a cool one. Another one you can turn off or on, a lot of people don't realize that you can control this, is you can control whether or not the chat is available. So in some cases, you're going to want to have the chat turned on. I would recommend defaulting to that situation. Um, but it is something that you may not always want to have people to have access to. Maybe you don't want to have the chat because you don't want people talking to each other while the meeting's going on, right? Maybe you want to avoid kind of those side conversations. That is something you can turn off or on, right? Um, you can also have file transfer turned on, right? This is really cool. If you're having a meeting and you want to be able to exchange files with people, that's something you can do directly through Zoom, right? You don't have to come up with a workaround. You don't have to upload it to Google Drive or go somewhere else and deal with it. So that can be pretty nice. Um, you may want to add co-hosts. And again, I know I'm going through quite a bit on this slide, uh, but there are going to be more demonstration slides after this. These are just some settings we needed to cover first. Um, but you might want to have co-hosts turned on. Now, 
where would you maybe not want to have co-host turned on? The only time I can imagine not having the option available, because this is about having things available to you when you start the meeting, the only time I would maybe do that is if you know for sure you're the only person that's going to be talking during that meeting, right? If that's the case, maybe you don't need co-hosts, but I've never really seen a reason not to have that feature turned on so that if I need to, I can make someone else a co-host during the meeting, right? So if I'm having a meeting and um, you know I have to take a phone call, for instance, and I need somebody else to take over and control the slides for a few minutes, I can add them as a co-host and I can make that adjustment and that's super simple, right? So you may wanna have that one turned on at all time. Um, allowing screen sharing, that's a no-brainer. You want to allow for that. Allowing virtual backgrounds, allowing live streaming, and then ultimately um, enabling group HD video is another setting that you probably want to go ahead and find and turn on that allows your meeting participants to have full HD quality video. If you don't turn that on, it's actually going to default to being a lower quality to save bandwidth as you're streaming, all right? So just a whole bunch of different settings there. I know that is quite a lot to cover. Um, we try to pack these, these webinars here with a lot of information as much as possible. So I apologize if that's a little bit more um, than, than you were ready for this morning, but everything else, or so this afternoon, everything else is gonna be moving uh, a little bit less aggressively there. So let's go ahead and dive into some of this here. Okay, so at this point, what we're gonna do, so the first thing I wanted to do and just kind of kind of fly through was just all the settings you have within Zoom before you create a meeting, right? But what we're gonna show you now and what I'm gonna take a little bit more time to explain, because I think this is the stuff that people are probably going to experience more themselves is the actual controls during a meeting or webinar, okay? So that's what you see on the screen here is that right now, what you are seeing across the bottom, and I, I think you can probably see my mouse here, so I'm gonna try to drag my mouse across the bottom, but we're looking at this bottom section right here, okay? And that is all of the controls. If you have set up the controls the way I just talked about them, that you're going to have access to across the bottom of the screen, right? Um, and so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna walk, walk through those controls one at a time and show you what each of them do and the different things that you have control over during one of your Zoom meetings or webinars, okay? So let's start with the very first option, which is the audio down here in the bottom left-hand corner, right? Um, so right now, if, if you're looking at your screen, you may actually see some of these controls as a viewer during a Zoom webinar, right? Um, but audio, what we're gonna do is if you were to come down to the audio icon, right, looks like a little pair of headphones, and you click on the little arrow right next to it, right? It's just a little up and down kind of symbol, a little, uh, little arrow icon, right? That is gonna open up a menu and then you can click on audio settings. And what that's gonna do is gonna open up this screen you, hear, you have here in front of you. And actually, if you wanna play along at home with some of this stuff, I'm not sure that you'll have all of these options available while you're just simply viewing a webinar. Um, but if you want, you can go ahead and play with these at home just to kinda of see how they work. Now, the first thing you're gonna be able to control here um, is your speaker volume, right? So that's number one at the top here, you're gonna see where it says speaker and right next to it, it says test speaker. And it's gonna give you a drop down menu where you can choose which speaker you want to play the audio from the webinar, right? So if I want, if I have headphones on and I want the, the audio to come through those, <clears throat> I need to make sure that I select the headphones, right? If I have uh, you know, external speakers and I wanna use those, I gotta make sure those are plugged in and I have them selected. So if at any point in time, you're not getting audio, right? There's, there's a couple things I've seen happen. One, one of the most common issues people have if they're not hearing audio during a Zoom meeting is that they have, an, they have another form of speaker that's selected here, right? So for instance, if you have Bluetooth headphones and they're turned on, but you're not trying to use them, there's always a chance that it automatically connected to and selected the headphones as your audio uh, speaker, right? So if that happens, you might, you might be having, there's a set of headphones across the room where the audio is coming out and you can't hear it, right? So keep that in mind, especially if you have a Bluetooth device, that is very common. You might have to watch out for that, right? So here you can test your speakers as well. You can play sound through them, make sure they're working correctly. And you can also control your output volume. So if you wanna increase or decrease, it should be the same volume control as you would use for your entire computer. Um, but that is one place where you can control it. So that's the first thing you can control. The second thing is the microphone. 
this one is super important, okay? You gotta make sure you have the right microphone selected, and you also need to make sure that your input volume is set correctly, all right? Now this is another one of these things that I think a lot of people have never tried to experiment with, and they have a lot more control than they realize. So if you come into this setting and you click on this button right here, it says test mic. What it's gonna do is it's gonna record through that microphone while you talk and it'll tell you to do this. It'll literally say like, talk out loud, right? Um, once you're done, it will stop and it will play that same audio back to you through the speakers that you chose earlier, right? Now, you, you wanna do this, especially if you're running a webinar, all right? So if you're gonna be running a webinar, it's really important to test this stuff in advance so that it works correctly, right? You don't wanna, you don't wanna start your webinar and then have people have trouble hearing you. Or you can have the opposite problem. If you have your, your microphone volume turned up too high, you can actually be kind of too noisy and you can create what's called peaking in the audio where it starts to crack at the top, right? It gets kind of hard to hear and it gets distorted um, the louder that you get, and that's not a good thing either. So a lot of times people have this box right here checked, which is automatically adjust microphone volume, and that can actually be a problem it's because I've had webinars, and, and you may have actually seen one because I, I realized uh, about a month ago that I had that box checked, and sometimes my voice would be nice and loud and clear, and then sometimes it would get really quiet all of a sudden, and I couldn't figure out why, and it was because I had this selected, and so Zoom kept adjusting my microphone volume volume based on when I was talking or not talking and it was really messing with the audio. So I personally recommend not checking automatically adjust microphone volume, leaving that box unchecked, and then adjusting your input volume until you think you sound correct, right? So if that's something that you need to uh, tweak or adjust in the future, I would definitely take a look at that, right? All right, so I'm going to take a quick second here. I, I did see some more um, chats and questions and Q&A's coming in through here. So I'm gonna see if I can't take a look at these for just a second here. Let me pull these up. All right. Uh, somebody says, okay, so you have an issues with buffering and you also have some issues with freezing, obviously. So we are gonna talk about how to test your internet connection. Both buffering and issues with Zoom potentially freezing are more than likely an issue of your speed, how, how well your, uh, how fast your internet connection is. Um, so that would be something to think about on that front. Um, let's see here. I'm sharing my screen as a presenter. I can see the participants' videos. Is there a way to do that? Can't see the participants' video when you're sharing your screen as a presenter. Okay, so that's, a, that's an interesting question. So when you share your screen as a presenter, um, on the right hand side, and I'm not sure that I can, I can show this to you because uh, the way you can share your screen on Zoom is a little bit sort of misleading, but you should see, if you see the box uh, on the right hand side that shows you yourself, right? So you should see your own video when you share a screen on Zoom. Um, there are some options at the top of that box. They look like um, a little minimize option, then there's kind of a little square, which usually means maximize, and there's actually one that has like two little dashes. And again, if you're not following this, I apologize because it is hard to talk about. Um, but if you click on the third of those, it should show you all of the participants in a drop down menu, right? So if you're sharing your screen, look for the box where you can see yourself on the screen, um, and there should actually be some options within that box. Uh, to be able to see more than one person uh, as you're as you're looking at those. So hopefully that helps you there. Um, we're going to talk about virtual background in a minute, so we'll come back to that question. Uh, we'll talk about how to go live on Facebook. I don't think we're covering poll questions today. I'll come back to that if I do have a chance. We've got stream to Facebook. Uh, and there will be a recording of this later, so yes, that will be available. Um, can I start an event with a Zoom social with everyone on camera and then switch to a webinar setup for my presentation? So, uh, unfortunately, you can't switch to a webinar while you're in the middle of a meeting, but you can use a meeting to essentially do a webinar format. So what I would do is I would start your meeting, I would go in and I would mute everyone, all right? So we're actually gonna show you how to do that in just a second. Mute everyone out so they can't interrupt what you're doing. Um, and then just simply share your screen as I'm doing right now and present to the group, right? So that would be the way to kind of do both of those. Um, hopefully that answers your question. So that's a few questions. I'm gonna come back to those. So if I didn't answer your question um, in there, do not worry, I will come back to it in just a second, but I wanna keep things moving. So let's jump back to the slides here. And I wanna show you the second set of settings 
uh, that you can, it was a lot of S's in a row, very alliterative, right? So the second set of settings that you can control here, and that's gonna be your video settings, all right? So you had audio, right? And the next one is video. So you wanna have the little icon right next to the camera, which you can see here on the bottom left side of my screen. You wanna open that up, and then you wanna click on video settings, right? And you're gonna have some interesting settings that you control in here. Now, what you're gonna see come up on your screen is what you're seeing uh, right here in the center of the screen right now. And the first thing I wanna mention is that you can also select which camera you're using here, right? So we showed you how to do that in the settings um, earlier with the audio, right? So you could select which speaker or microphone. Now you can select which camera. So this can be another one that's kind of confusing to people. A lot of people have a, web, a, a webcam built into their, their computer, right? Um, but you might want to use an external webcam. So in my case, I'm actually using a different webcam. And let me see if I can, I'm actually going to try to change this really quick while I'm in here so that you can see the difference. Oh, and I'm actually, I'm moving forward in my, my, my presentation instead of making a change. Okay, here it is. So I'm going to switch my camera just for a second so you can actually see something here. So this is this is my built-in webcam, all right? So th this is what one of the weird things about the laptop that I own um, is that my camera is, is built into the bottom of the screen. So if I'm typing, this is where my fingers would literally be while typing. I cannot explain why it is the way it is. I think it's, it's actually kind of terrible. I'm going to switch back. And so what I did to avoid using that camera, because you could tell that's not the best camera, um, it's in a weird position. The, the video is not quite good. This is an external camera. This is an external uh, my Logitech Brio USB camera that I have plugged in. And I think it looks a lot better, right? So it's really important to know how to change that um, if you're like me and you have a built-in webcam or you don't have a built-in at all and you need to make sure you're using the right one, right? Now below that, you're gonna have options for widescreen versus the original ratio. I tended to leave it selected as widescreen because most of these cameras are set up that way. Um, here's where you can enable HD. So if you did have that turned on, if you are allowing people to use HD video, which we talked about at the beginning of the webinar, here's where you can make those selections. Um, you can actually mirror your video and you can even touch up your appearance. So you can click on this one. Um, and what that does is it gets rid of your wrinkles and you know, you've probably seen those, those kind of smoothing effects that are created with some filters on places like Instagram. Um, you can do that in here. So that's actually kind of an interesting one, right? Um, and then you're gonna see a whole bunch of different boxes that you can check here. I'm not gonna go into all of them because I don't have time for that today, um, but there's quite a bit that you can control. Now, one thing I'll mention is while we're in this screen real quick, is if you look over here on the left-hand side, you can see that this is the settings for your entire Zoom meeting, right? I can come in here, I can change my audio, I've got my general settings, I've got my share screen, virtual background, so on and so forth. So you don't necessarily have to come down and push the little button right next to the camera. Once you open up your overall settings, they are all technically in here, right? So the one I showed you earlier for audio was just this, this tab right here selected, and this is this video tab. So if you wanna move around once you have the settings open, you can do it that way as well, all right? All right, so let's talk about one of, uh, I think everyone's favorite parts of Zoom. And I'm actually gonna go ahead and let me see here. here. Let me go ahead and choose my virtual background. If I, let me, let me try one real quick. I'm just gonna show you a quick example as we're live. So this, this is a virtual background, right? So this is what happens when you click on the virtual background option. I went ahead and changed mine over to San Francisco for just a second. I'm gonna switch that off. Um, but I'm gonna show you the settings here and how you can do this. And you can actually do what's really cool is you can create your own virtual background. So the other, so to, to find virtual background, again, you come down to camera settings and instead of clicking on video settings, you just click on choose virtual background. Again, it's gonna be that tab here within this menu. And they're gonna give you, I think it's five that are built in. They give you these three and then these two are actually short little videos that play on loops. So you can even use a video as your background. And so what Zoom does is it, it kind of does its best guess. So you can see from this picture here, um, it's got a little bit around my ears where it's not quite cutting everything out behind me. So it's not perfect, but it's gonna do its best guess. It's gonna remove you and your body from the image and it's gonna replace whatever's behind you with one of these options, right? Um, you can even set up green screen if you want it to work that much better. You are not required to have green screen. You can use a virtual background without them. Um, but these are really cool. So again, if you want to try one of these, you just want to open up your settings, come over to virtual background, and you've got these five you can select from. But if you click on this little plus icon right here, you can upload anything you want. 
So just to give you a way you can do this, if you go to Canva, C-A-N-V-A dot com, Canva dot com, that's where you can go um, to create your own virtual background. So you can actually create these pictures that looks like an office and you can put your logo on the wall or you can add, you know, whatever, really all, all, whatever you can imagine, you can create a virtual background of um, and you can install that here within the system. So that's pretty cool. So I always thought um, that was particularly useful and might be, might be worth sharing with you, all right? So um, that brings us to our first slide that is about how you can sign up to learn more about what we're doing and get the webinar slides and all kinds of good stuff. So I want to take a second to talk about this and then I'm going to answer a few more of your questions. All right. So first thing is, uh, do you want the webinar slides? So if you're watching this right now, you feel like, yes, I'd like a copy of those slides. Um, you're going to need to sign up for this list. The second reason, the more important reason in my opinion to sign up on our list here is that we are gonna send you free advice on how to make videos for your business, right? So the name of our company is Business Video School. We teach real estate agents and small business owners how to use video in their business to save time and make more money. And so if you're curious to do that, if you wanna start using video or you wanna learn how video could be impacting your business, you're definitely gonna to wanna to sign up for this email list, okay? What we're gonna do is for the first two two weeks, you are going to get a free video tip every single day in your email inbox, right? So that's the first two weeks. After that, you continue getting a weekly video tip. And whenever we have extra stuff to share, we will go ahead and share it, right? So these are free. These are useful directly in your business. They're very simple. They're usually just a few minutes or, or even less. Sometimes, sometimes they're only 60 seconds long. So it's stuff you can use and apply right away. Now, we'll also send you information about business video school itself. So if you have questions about Business Video School, you want to know um, how to get enrolled, you want to know what some of the upcoming courses are, all that kind of stuff, we will be sharing with this list as well, okay? So here's what I want you to do is if you would like to go ahead and get signed up for this, you want to send a text message to 44222, so that's the phone number, and the body of the text message should just be all one word, learn video, L-E-A-R-N-V-I-D-E-O, no quotations around it, just those letters, and if you send that to us, it's going to respond and say, hey, what's your email address, and then you submit that, and you're good to go. The other way to do it, though, is just to go to that URL that you see down there, which is bit.ly slash freevidtips, and if you go to that URL, you're going to be able to access the list as well, and you're going to get signed up on it, all right? Um, so that, I will leave that, uh, there's going to be some information on the next slide about this. We're going to go ahead and keep moving here um, so we can get everything wrapped up in time. So let's go ahead and move on. But you will see here in the bottom left-hand corner that that information, if you do want to get set up for our email list, is still available, okay? All right, moving along, moving right along here. Now, at the, in the bottom of the screen, when you are on Zoom, you are going to see additional settings, additional things that you can control. And the first that I want to show you next is the participants, right? So the participants button, you click on that, and that's going to open what you see here on the screen, which is a list of all the participants. Now, in my case, this the, during this demo, I was the only one on this Zoom, but if you have other people, they're going to show up there. And the first thing I want to show you here is the mute all. So this button that I've got highlighted here, right in the center of the screen at the bottom of that, of that window there, that's how you mute everybody, right? So th this is probably, I think, of all, all the questions I've ever gotten about Zoom, this is the one that comes up the most, is how do I mute all the people on my Zoom meeting, right? Because there's somebody who answers a phone call, there's somebody um, who does something and you can't figure out who it is, and even if you're scrolling through all the people on the right-hand side, if you have a lot of people on your meeting, it can be hard to figure out who it is that's making noise. So the mute all button is your friend. You're going to want to come up in here and click on that button whenever you have somebody making noise in the background and you need to get rid of it, okay? Um, that button alone will probably save you you know, 50% of the, the hassle that you, you could deal with on a Zoom meeting. I've, I've heard plenty of horror stories about people um, getting on phone calls, having personal conversations, all that kind of stuff. So that mute all button is very useful. And then if you click on this more button right here, you have options for all of this different stuff, right? So you have control over uh, what the participants, what the attendees are allowed to do. Can they raise their hand? Uh, can they view the participant count? In other words, can they see how many people are on your meeting? Um, you can mute them all upon entry. All kinds of interesting stuff here, right? So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave this on the screen for just a second. You guys can continue reading through that. I am going to go ahead and pull up the chat um, for just a minute and see what kind of Q, Q, uh, questions and stuff we got coming in here. So let me read through a few more of those. 
Um, so there's a question about uh, what did you say Canva or Canvas? So that is Canva, and I'm going to just go ahead and type it in the chat here. So it's Canva.com. It's a free graphic design platform um, with all kinds of cool stuff on there. So that would be a really cool one to uh, to tap into to do some design work with. Uh, so uh, what is it if you mirror your video? So when you mirror your video, that just means that you flip it like this, right? So if you're seeing me on the screen right now, this side is on this side instead, and this side's on this side, right? So that's all it means is that you're just seeing the mirror image um, instead of the normal image. So Again, I don't necessarily know why you'd need to do that, but people do uh, tend to turn that off or on, you know, for preference reasons. Um, let's see. Go to webinar. Sorry, we can't really. Not talking about go to webinar today, unfortunately. Um, come up. So the presentation will be saved. That is true. All right, we talked about the gallery setting. Sorry, and I, and I apologize. I'm probably I'm, I'm realizing I'm going to miss a few of these questions. Um, Somebody's having the virtual background show up over your face. So I apologize for that. Uh, what's happening if that, if that, so if you do have part of your body get cut off when you create a virtual background, what's happening is that Zoom is not recognizing that as part of you. <laughs> and it's actually thinking that that must be part of the background and it's getting rid of it. Um, I have, I've never heard of that before. That's actually the first time I've heard of that. So I don't necessarily have a recommendation for you, but you might want to turn on some lights, right? So one of the things that Zoom is going to need in order to determine what is or is not the background is going to be need to be able to see your face clearly and your body. Um, so if you have an issue with that, if, if the background is kind of covering you up or something like that, um, you may want to consider getting some lighting and putting some lighting up so that your face is a little bit more clear uh, to the camera. That could be the issue. Um, and it says, does it mute them if they're on their cell phone too? So if you mute people, it should mute no, them no matter what their source is. Um, so that should get, should take care of that issue. Um, somebody said the, the lead digit identifier not recognized when I text to 44222. So I'm going to go ahead and copy over the, uh, the, a couple useful links for you all here in just a second. Let me actually, I'm going to stop the uh, share for just a second so I can go ahead and grab this link for you. So uh, while I'm doing that, let me see if there's any other questions that I can answer. Actually, I'm having. Let's see here. Sorry, and I apologize. You know, normally I've got Jeff and Tristan here to feed me um, all of the responses and whatnot, all the questions. Uh, so somebody's asking about their green screen, how to use the green screen if uh, your computer doesn't have the right bandwidth for it. Um, unfortunately, the green screen is going to, if you want to use the green screen setting, I believe you need a quad core computer. So what that means is that if your computer does not have four cores in the processor, um, that might be the issue that you're running into there, right? So that is going to be a problem. So what, what you can do is, you know, you just have to tell it that you're not using green screen, unfortunately. It's not, not really quite ideal, I understand, um, but unfortunately that is the case. So let me get back to my slides here, and I'm going to get back to sharing the screen. Sorry, again, apologize. I'm, I'm doing a lot of things today that I am, uh, I think I'm doing all right, hopefully, but just kind of scrambling to go back and forth. And I do have some links for you. So if you're having trouble, I'm going to go ahead and post these real quick, and then I'll get back to the presentation. If you're having trouble getting registered for our email list, um, I just went ahead and posted three links in the chat. Those links are going to be, uh, where you can like our Facebook page, highly, highly recommended. We share a ton of useful information, free stuff left and right on the business page. Um, so I would do that. Number two is going to be our link to the uh, email list. So bit.ly slash free vid tips. It's the second link in the, in the post I just put in the chat. Um, that's where you can register for our email list. So if you were trying to text us earlier and you were having issues, go ahead and click on that link. And the third one is where you can enroll in the school. Obviously, I'm not telling you to do that right now, but people have asked questions about it, um, so it is available there if you'd like it, okay? All righty, moving on. Let's go ahead and keep things rolling here. So we just talked about that. All right, the next tab that we are going to talk about 
is a really important one and that is the share screen button right so you can see at the uh, the bottom of your screen when you are running a zoom meeting you can share all kinds of interesting things so if you click on that share screen button what you're gonna find is that it's gonna give you the option to not only share your screen but to share a whole bunch of other things so Take a look at the screen you see in front of you right now, right? I can share my desktop, which means that whatever shows up on my computer, my viewers are going to see it, right? I can share a Google Chrome tab. So I can take just a single tab from Google Chrome and I can share that, right? Or whatever, whatever internet browser I'm on. Um, but what's really interesting is that there's all these other things. Pretty much anything that's open on your computer, um, and I believe we were on uh, somebody else's computer when we did this, but you can see here they had their calculator open, um, they had Photoshop open. We could technically share any of these. So if you ever wanna do a demonstration of how to use a particular piece of software, um, even if it's something that's only on your computer, you can share that through Zoom. Now where this gets really interesting is where you look here at the top and these two in particular I want to talk about for a second whiteboard and iPhone slash iPad via AirPlay. I can create a whiteboard on my computer so if I click on share screen and I click whiteboard I can start drawing on the screen of my computer and the the viewers are going to see it right so if I want to do a brainstorm if I want to um, you know talk about a, a design you know we're going to talk about the layout for our new website or something that can be really really helpful to be able to pull open that whiteboard and and just kind of doodle and draw on the screen right another that's really useful is I can share my iPhone or iPad through AirPlay so if you have an iPhone or iPad and you want to share something from that screen you can do that right you can even basically share the what the the content of the camera because I can turn on share my screen I can open my camera and I can show things with that camera so that's all super useful now one thing I really want you to all pay attention to because this took me a long time to figure out I'm gonna hopefully save you some hassle and I did see this come up in the questions look down here at the bottom of this window you have share computer sound and you have optimized screen share for video clip all right please remember those are there if you want to share a video while on a Zoom call, you need to check these two boxes, all right? If you do not do it, your video will not play hardly at all. If you do it, your video will play, but it probably still won't be perfect because Zoom is really not meant for playing existing videos. But it will look and sound a lot better if you click on those two things. Also keep that in mind, if you do not click on share computer sound, if you play any audio through your computer, it's not necessarily sharing it through your Zoom meeting or webinar, okay? <clears throat> so please keep that in mind. Check those boxes if you need to optimize for those reasons, and then click on share, and at that point you'll share your screen, or you'll share the whiteboard, or you'll share the phone screen, whatever it is you decided to share on that webinar, okay? The next thing I want to show you here as we're going along the bottom, and again, we're not looking at every single individual setting, uh, but as we're going across the bottom here, you've got your share screen, we're skipping over polling for today, and then you've got the record button. So what happens if you click on that record button? Well, you can see that you get the option for record to this computer and record to the cloud, right? Now, if you record to the computer, what's gonna happen is when the meeting or the webinar is done, it's going to convert the video first. So first it saves it as kind of a Zoom specific file. And when you're done, it converts it. So it's gonna convert it usually to an MP4 file, which is a standard video type. You cannot watch it until that's done. So keep that in mind. That has to happen if it's on your computer. Now, on the other hand, if you wanna save it to the cloud, which I would recommend defaulting to saving things to the cloud because it's not gonna delete it accidentally, right? Because if I go to save it on my computer and I, and I say don't convert and then I forget about, I mean, there's, there's ways to lose that file. If I put it into the cloud, I can always go back and get it later, right? I can always download it again if I accidentally delete the copy that I have. So you might wanna to default to recording in the cloud. And keep in mind too when you start recording you can pause the recording so you can actually hit a pause button and, and pause it and then start it again or you can also manually stop it so if you want to record just a portion of your meeting you can do that where is that particularly useful well let's say you want to do an interview video you want to create a cool interview video with one of your referral partners you can actually do that through zoom by starting the meeting getting all situated getting ready coming down to here hitting record having your conversation, then hitting the stop button, and then you only recorded that portion, right? That can be really, really cool. So that would be something to think about when you're using the recording feature, especially if you wanna do some sort of interview or conversation-based recording, right? 
And so there is a, a follow-up on that that I wanted to add here, um, which is a lot of people ask us if I am going to do an interview, because this is a kind of video that's getting really popular. I do recommend giving it a try. It's one of the easier forms of content that you can create for your business is to just simply interview someone. But if you're doing it, a lot of times people ask, how do I, how do I get it so that both of us are on the screen? Okay. Now, when you are recording, so if you're the person controlling the recording, it's going to use the settings that you're using on your end, okay? So what I mean by that is that if there's more than one person, you're going to have the option between speaker view and gallery view. So if you look up here, and right here in the top right corner of the screen, and we blew it up here so you can see it bigger, right? Same thing over here, sort of same situation. You have these options between speaker view and gallery view. If you're on speaker view, only the person who's talking shows up on the screen, all right? If you're in gallery view, everyone or as many people as will fit onto the screen will show up on the screen. So if you're doing an interview, you might want to keep it on maybe speaker view because you only want the person who's talking to show up, right? Or you might want to do gallery view. Or if you really want to get fancy, which I've done a few times, you can switch back and forth between the two. So for a while, you can have just the speaker. And then maybe if they're getting kind of long-winded and they're kind of talking for more than 30 seconds or so, you can switch to gallery view. Now you can see both of you. Maybe switch back to speaker, right? So you actually have control over that. Um, if you want to keep it simple, just turn it on one of those and just leave it there. If I was going to default to one or the other, I'd probably leave it on gallery view so that you can see both people the whole time. It just makes it a little bit more visually interesting, but that is something that you have control over. Um, definitely worth keeping that in mind, okay? And then finally, in terms of the settings here at the bottom of the screen, while you are uh, doing a meeting or a webinar, the last thing you have is this more button, and that's where you can go live on these platforms. So you can go live on Facebook, you can go live on Workplace for, for Facebook. I've never used Workplace, but if you do use it in your business, that is something you can do. And you can also, also go live on YouTube, right? So if you click on that, I just want to show you what would happen. The first thing that's going to happen is it gives you this screen here in the top left-hand corner. You can choose if you want to share it on your timeline, if you want to share it to a group, you want to share it on a friend's timeline, you have a bunch of different options. And then once you select which of those you want and click next, it is going to show you this next screen here, which is a preview win you, window. You do need to write a title and description. So that's for the Facebook post version of the, of the stream, right? So you write out a title, write out a description. And then here's the thing. Keep this in mind. This is important to remember okay once you hit that go live button the live video starts on Facebook so even though you're not seeing it right away on Facebook it is gonna start sharing it immediately to Facebook right so basically you hit that go live button you're gonna see it doing some stuff on the screen but start talking right away at that point I've made that mistake of kind of sitting there going I don't know if I'm live or not yet um, and it doesn't look very good so as soon as you hit go live um, that is where where the video is live at that point okay all right, so we got a few slides left. I do see more questions rolling in, so I'm gonna take a break to answer those in just a second. I do wanna talk really, really quickly um, about some lighting and some audio uh, kind of tips and tricks to make yourself look better, right? So we get this question a lot is like, how do I look like, well, I'm not going to try to you know, sound like I'm bragging, but how do I look like you on camera, right? Because we literally have a professional backdrop on the wall here this is actually like, you know, basically siding I built into the wall. We've got a professional light over here. We've got two windows that are open on either side of it. And so generally I look pretty well lit. There's no shadows behind me and, and you know, it looks pretty decent, right? So how do we do that? Well, we do it with a professional light. So I've got a really big soft box light directly behind the camera right here and I've got two windows that give me some additional natural light. I like having the soft box light because I can control that directly. Right? I don't have to depend on the sun being in, a, in the right position or any of that kind of stuff. Um, but that's my setup. So if I was going to use just lights, if I didn't have these two windows in here, I would probably have one soft box here and one soft box there. So right, they're right next to me, or sorry, right next to the camera. Uh, right next to, you know, in front of me. And again, if you're in the business video school, this all probably sounds familiar because this is how you should always set up whenever you're doing a video, right? You should have your lights on either side of the camera. Um, you don't want to have overhead light. So let me see, I think I may have had, I actually, yeah, I've got a good picture of this in here, right? This is what I see people mess up the most is that they have one of these overhead lights in their room and they create these nasty shadows, right? So you can see right now, you can see my whole face is nice and evenly lit. 
no issues, right? And then look at what it looks like in this picture here. That's with overhead light. When you have light shining from directly above you, it generally does not look very good. Sometimes it's actually better just to turn the overhead lights off altogether and open a few windows in the room, right? A lot of times it's gonna give you much better looking light. And so here's the alternative, right? That's what overhead light looks like. This is what natural light looks like. Right? So look, I'm going to go flick back and forth between those for a second. This is overhead light. This is me standing directly underneath an overhead light. This is me standing in front of a window, right? It's crazy. I, I, every time I see this, I'm always kind of, kind of shocked by the difference between these two. It's going to be much better to use ambient natural light that's simply filling the room than it is to have your overhead lights turned on. So that might seem kind of crazy, but that is the difference and it is very, very distinct. So if you can use natural light, if you can put a light somewhere near your camera, you're going to look a lot better. And trust me, this is going to make you more confident, right? I mean, anytime you look and feel good, you are going to perform better. So even if you're just having a one-on-one -on -one conversation with a lead or a prospective you know, customer or something like that, try to keep this stuff in mind. If you look that much more professional, it's just like how you dress, right? If you're going to dress poorly, if you're going to wear gym clothes to a business meeting, you're probably not going to feel as good, right? So keep that in mind. The better you look, the better you're going to feel, and the more confident you're going to be, the better that meeting is going to go for you, all right? Okay, so we do have one more break slide here. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and check my chat at this point, see if I can answer a few more questions. Before I do that, I did wanna mention that we've also had um, several brokers, team leads, people that run offices um, have asked us after seeing one of these educational webinars, hey, could you do that webinar for our office or could you do that webinar for our team? And I wanna let you know, we are happy to do that. So, and, that, and that's for free. We don't charge for this, right? This is a free service that we offer through Business Video School because our mission is to help as many small business owners learn to use video in their business as possible because we think that's just a super, super important aspect of business. So if you would like us to offer or so if you would like us to do this webinar, this particular webinar or any of the other ones you've seen us do uh, for your brokerage or for your uh, group of agents, if you have a group really of any, of any small business owners that you think could benefit from this, just go ahead and send a text message. Just send, a t just send like the word webinar or reference webinar. This is actually a cell phone number, so it's not going to be an automated system. Just send webinar to 636-541-7651. Um, and we'll get you set up with one of those, all right? So I'm gonna take a second now, and again, I'm gonna look at the Q&A here. Um, let's see here. Can you use television monitor speakers instead of the computer speakers? Well, you could do that if you can get the speakers connected to your computer. So if you can get your computer to recognize the speakers, uh, you can use any speakers you would like, but you gotta get the computer to recognize it, all right? Um, how can I get access to the three Zoom classes you are offering? Well, you would need to become a member of our Business Video School to do that. So if you haven't yet, if you are curious about Business Video School, I'm not going to have a lot of time to go into it today. I will say this. We are doing... Uh, we launched something new, which we call the Business Video School Campus. It's a new central hub for the school. We have all kinds of cool stuff, and that's actually where we're doing those Zoom workshops. Um, what I would do is I'll go ahead and throw the links into the chat again right now. Let me go ahead and pull that up and do that as we're talking. So I'm going to throw the links into the chat again. And if you go to the third link, so the one that's about enrolling in the Business Video School, you will see information there about what is available through Business Video School, right? So we've got too much to cover today. I don't want to do a pitch or anything like that. Um, but if you are curious about those Zoom workshops, you can uh, learn a little bit more about how to get involved in the school there. And again, just remember, just be on our email list. You're going to get lots and lots of information about what we're doing there um, as well. So, okay, it makes your presentation. How do you get the colored cursor, the highlight? It makes your presentation easy to follow. Um, so I think that is actually a default effect when you share your screen on Zoom. Um, I, I may have to check on that, but I, I've always seen that, that pop up. And I don't remember actually having to turn that particular feature on. Uh, but again, I, I will look into that and I will try to try to mention that next time we're on the webinar here because that's something I'd like to confirm as well. Um, old version, I want a group background, but it doesn't show the virtual backgrounds tab. Okay, so that is a good question. Zoom has a lot of versions. So if you're seeing some settings or some controls that you're not used to seeing, um, that could be why. There are lots of different versions of Zoom and it updates like every couple weeks, right? Um, so if you do not see... 
the uh, the links, please make sure that you are um, you're on the most up to date version. Okay, and I just realized I, I wasn't always checking the chat here. I I believe I was only sending the links to just the panelists and none of your panelists, so nobody was getting them. So now you should see them. All right. So I apologize. I know that was probably kind of frustrating. Um, again, trying to kind of do multiple jobs here today, but you should see the links now. So if you do not see those links, uh, please make sure you let me know. Let's see, one or two more questions. Any suggestions for those of us wearing glasses? That's a good question. Um, unfortunately, I don't. <laughs> I think that you know, with, with lights, you're always gonna have reflections into your glasses if you're not careful. Um, but yes, that, the one thing you may wanna consider, I've, I've got a little bit of help uh, in my, my background here. She was suggesting 45 degree angle. So if you have glasses on, and you want to avoid having the lights reflected in your glasses, try to put your lights at a 45 degree angle. And so that way the camera can't see the lights in the reflection in your glasses. So that's one thing you can do. Um, we have done that in our studio before, okay? All right, so it looks like, um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna come back to these questions here. I know there definitely are more, but we do have a, a few more slides to cover and I wanna make sure that some of our slides address some of the questions. I just don't wanna be repeating things for no reason. So the next thing was audio, right? Which we talked a little bit about how to control the audio settings, um, but I did wanna show you some simple audio tricks, a few things that you can kind of do to make sure your audio is coming through as clearly as possible. Um, the first thing is you just wanna make sure that you do a microphone check, right? So. When I showed you how to do that little test at the beginning, right, where you can talk and then it's gonna play it back to you, just do that every single time. Do that before every single meeting. You never know, there's gonna be one time where you don't have something plugged in right. There's gonna be one time where you bumped your microphone and you, you accidentally reset the volume on it, right? So you might think everything's fine and, and people could hardly hear you or they can hear you and it's way too loud, right? So you definitely wanna do a microphone check every time. I would recommend looking into an external microphone of some kind, right? So the built-in microphone in your computer is not bad. For the purpose of most meetings, you're probably fine. But if you're gonna be doing presenting, right? If you're gonna be, be speaking to people, you might wanna invest in a better mic. Now, that all being said, your internet connection, all these other things come into play too. So you may have really good equipment and not necessarily have something great come out of the other end. You can't control everything, right? So keep that in mind. There's only so much you can really do here, but there are some things you can do. Now in this case, you can see, I'm gonna pull it down for just a second. This is my overhead microphone. And actually as that, <clears throat> as that moved, I may have sounded a little bit different. Um, but that's, that's an option. You can have an overhead boom lap microphone. You can use a lapel microphone. You see an example of a $40 lapel microphone on the screen. Um, or you can even use something a little bit fancier like a blue Yeti microphone. Uh, if you like how Tristan sounds, Tristan actually uses a blue Yeti microphone. So that is something um, that you might wanna do. And that's gonna give you control on the microphone itself for the volume. So you can increase or decrease the volume on the microphone and through the software. So that gives you a whole bunch of different options. Um, a lapel microphone can be great, so don't be afraid to get one of those. And you can use it with other videos that you make. So if you do decide to buy a mic and you wanna use it for other videos, I would go with either the lapel microphone or the overhead mic like I have here, right? All right, moving on. Okay, just a few more quick tips here, and I know that, that you know in hindsight this is a lot to go over today, so I apologize. I know it is a little bit drinking out of a fire hose, but again, remember, we break all of this down into three different one-hour trainings within the school. It's a little bit easier to follow along. Um, so make sure that, again, you can see up here in the corner, this is for if you want us to do this webinar for your brokerage, make sure you text in. But again, make sure you're on our email list if you want more information about joining the school. As of Friday, we are announcing a really, really awesome discount for you. So if you're not on the email list, please make sure you do join so you can receive that discount when it goes live. A um, couple last things to show you before we wrap up here. And what I will do is I'll hang around at the end for a few extra minutes and answer more of the questions. So if you do have questions and you do have a few more minutes, please hang around. But this is a big one is framing, all right? I cannot tell you how much it drives me crazy when people are in weird spots in their frame, okay? So a couple quick things. Don't be super close. If your head fills up the entire image, you're probably a little bit too close. 
don't be super far away. If I cannot tell who you are because you're so small in your frame, that's too far away, right? Um, what you're seeing on the screen is an example of, a, of good framing where I'm in the right place, which you could see right now on the screen as well. You should have it so your head has a little bit of space above it. You don't want to necessarily have the top of your head getting cut off, um, but you don't want there to be too much space, right? You can see on the second image here, I'm way down in the frame. It looks uncomfortable. It's kind of hard. You don't feel like you're making direct eye contact with me, right? So please make sure you try to keep your eyes about one third of the way down. So there should be about a third of the, of the screen above and two thirds below, right? So I'm kind of showing you that with my hands right now. That's kind of where you want your eyes to be is at the one third mark on the screen. And if you do that, you're gonna look that much better. Again, it's gonna make you feel that much more confident. You're gonna do a much better job on your presentation if you are framed correctly, okay? So just some, some quick tips there in terms of what you're looking like. And then finally, and I do believe this is my last slide, so I, I got this done in time. I'm actually kind of, I'm kind of surprised by that. Um, but finally here, and this is really important, is please try to test your internet connection whenever you can ahead of time. There's a good chance if, you, if you're having issues, right? So your, your quality's you know, not very good, you're having problems with things cutting in and out, it's probably because of your internet connection, right? It's really important that you have two things here enough speed, you need an internet connection that's got enough speed, right? You need a, you need a minimum of 0.6 megabits per second, um, really 2.5 megabits up, down, and download is, is what you're ideally looking for. The more the better, but that's what you need at a bare, kind of a bare minimum. Um, so speed is important, but the other thing that's important is that your internet connection doesn't cut in and out. So if you're in like a rural area or you're in an area where um, you know, sometimes the internet gets throttled for some reason, which is one of the things these companies are doing now. That could be your problem, right? So you might be trying to replace technology and, you know, buy a better camera or microphone or all this kind of stuff, and it might actually be an issue with your internet connection, right? So if you've had issues like that and you've never connected or you never tested your speed, um, you can go to www.speedtest.net. Um, if you just Google internet speed test, I think Google actually has one built into their, their search browser, so it'll just pop up as the first result, and you, you hit run test, and you're good to go. Uh, but I would really recommend doing that because that might be your problem. One other bit of advice here, and then I'll get into some of your questions, is that um, if you think you're having an issue with your internet, go ahead and plug your computer into your ethernet directly, right? We're all very used to using Wi-Fi, and Wi-Fi is great, but Wi-Fi a lot of times is a slower connection than being directly plugged into the ethernet port, right? So go find your router, go find that that box that's connected to the, the Wi-Fi router, right? Find where it goes into the wall and, and switch in your computer. A lot of times uh, there's a switch there with multiple ethernet ports you can plug into one of them, right? So try that out and see if it improves your quality because if it does, then you're determining that it's actually your Wi-Fi, not necessarily your internet directly. So just a couple quick tips there um, on a few things you can do to improve uh, the quality of your stream by looking at the speed and the consistency of your internet connection, all right? All right, so I got a final slide here for you, which is just that information again on where you can get your free video tips. You can get the slides from today. Um, you can follow our Facebook page. Please, please do that. I, we post all kinds of great stuff there. We'd love to have your support on our Facebook page. Um, and then finally, obviously, you have an, a link where you can enroll in the Business Video School. So I, I did not have any time to talk about the Business Video School specifically today, but you will receive emails about it if you do sign up. So if you're not on that email list, make sure you're on there because we will be telling you about this offer. Um, I can't publicly say anything about it yet, but it is coming out this Friday. It's a really, really good discount. It's a one-time only type of deal. We're not going to ever do it again. Um, so if you are curious about that, please make sure you're on our list, all right? So at this point, obviously we are out of time. What I will do, however, is I'm gonna hang out and answer um, some of the questions. So if you have a question, if it's really important to get an answer, just go ahead and put it in again, because I'm gonna basically start at the most recent ones and work my way backwards a little bit. But I'm gonna hang around for another five to 10 minutes um, and try to answer as many of these as we can, because I, I know there was quite a, a, quite a few that came through. So um, again, I appreciate you being here and uh, let's, let's see, what we can, see what we can answer for you. All right, somebody's asking to see the lighting slide again, so we can do that while we're answering the rest of these. We'll kind of pop back to that real quick. Uh, one more. Okay, there's your lighting slide. So, 
asking about the business Zoom uh, boot camp or, or our, three, our three training. So I'm going to, again, post the links one more time here. Again, make sure you, on that second link, I'm just going to go ahead and copy and paste that as well because that's the exact one you need. I'm going to paste the link right now. This link, bit.ly slash free vid tips, that's where you register for our email list, and that is where you'll get more information about how to, in, how to join the school. Um, so if you do join that, just make sure that you are checking there as, as, on a regular basis. All right, uh, how about using AirPods for listening and speaking as well? So that's a good question. Um, so the AirPods, you know, you're, you're, I would be, I feel confident you could probably use it for both, but what you're going to want to do is go into those settings and make sure for speakers that it says, you know, your AirPods, right? And then also for microphone, make sure it says AirPods. If it doesn't say AirPods in both of those spots, then for one, one reason or another, they're not registering for the speakers or for the microphone, right? So I know that when you record videos on your phone, sometimes the AirPods don't work for that. Um, so I don't know that they work universally in all cases, but if you check that it is listed as the speaker and as the microphone, then you will be good to go in that case, all right? Um, let me see, what else we got here? Lighting slide, we shared that. Thank you for those of you saying thanks, all that kind of stuff, that's great. Um, don't like when you're looking up someone's nose, very distracting, that's a fair point. Yeah, you definitely don't like that, right? <laughs> Uh, okay, so video replay. So there will be a replay of this available through Lab Code Agents uh, on the YouTube channel. So if you're not following Lab Code Agents on YouTube, please make sure to do that. Um, they'll be available there, and they'll also be available on the Facebook page, I believe. Uh, let's see. Do you edit the video afterwards? Okay, so there's a question about the voice track and the presenter's lips are always offset and are never exactly in sync. Do you edit the video afterwards to exactly match up the voice and the lips with the two files that Zoom gives you? Um, so then that's a question from, it looks like, Brian. So yeah, I mean, Brian, I, I would say if you're still here, um, you can edit them together. Now, it shouldn't do that. So your, your final version, you know, should be synced up correctly, and I haven't actually seen that problem. Um, but it is possible to add those together. So if you do need to do that, you can take the audio and the video track. Uh, what, what I would do is I would strip the audio out of the video track and then adjust it. You don't necessarily need to bring in a separate audio track. Um, but that is one way that you can get that fixed. Okay, and then apparently under settings, you can also record separate audio for each individual participant. So I don't know if that would be particularly useful in this case, um, but that would be that would be one thing you can do. All right, same question, Bob. Can you get my profile picture to show up when the camera is off when I log into meetings via my account? Um, so yes, I believe, and I think that's a default setting. So if you have a profile picture associated with your account, I do believe that you should be, that should just be what shows up. So for instance, um, you can see that uh, Jake today is one of our, is one of the panelists on the, on the call today. He doesn't have his camera turned on. So the lab code agents logo is what shows up in that place. I was under the impression that that's a default setting. So if, as long as you have a profile picture, I do believe that is what happens. Um, but I may need to look into that if that's something you have to turn off or on. All right. Um, I'm going to look now at the Q and A's for a second. Um, let me see if there's anything I haven't answered in here. So if someone comes into the meeting after you've started and they're already all muted, the new person is not muted. So correct. So if you do not, so there's a setting when you create your meetings that you can mute all participants upon entry. And it is something you can turn on during the meeting. So I believe if you go to participants and you go to that box that, that said like uh, see more, right? If you click on that see more box, that's where you should be able to turn, turn, their, uh, turn it so that they're muted when they first join the meeting. Um, you're going to want to have that setting turned on if you want people automatically muted, right? But they won't necessarily be muted if that's not turned on, in which case you got to go through and just, you know, you can just mute all again and that takes care of it, right? Barnwood background that you show. <laughs> so Richard was asking about my background. So this this background, if you are curious, is shiplap. Um, basically, it's a material you can buy at like Home Depot. Uh, it's kind of an interior siding type stuff that just looks really interesting. Um, so that's real. That is not a that's not a virtual background. A lot of people think it is virtual, but um, in hindsight, I probably should just use the virtual background. I wouldn't have to put all this crap on my wall, which took me like an entire day. <laughs> 
Um, so I have any special lighting on now, such an LED light. Um, I do have a soft box light above, behind me there, so I believe I, I did mention that earlier. Um, let's see, only record to cloud with a paid version. Yes, you can only record if you do have a paid version of Zoom. Uh, pull out the participants. So yes, uh, so here, here's a good question. We have a question about how do you pull out the participants that actually join the meeting versus the registration? Number one, you have to have required registration. So if you do a meeting that did not require registration, you cannot get this report. But if you did and you said registrations, I'm assuming you did require it. What you do is you go into the meeting and you'll find that there is actually a section when you log into Zoom, you can go over and there's a section for reports. You want to find the report section and then you can find the meeting and you can export a report and that report will show you who attended your meeting and it will even show you how long they attended. So if they weren't on there the whole time, it will tell you that. Um, so that can be pretty useful. Um, if you want to host a webinar, so there's a setting within Zoom for webinars in particular. You'll obviously want to use that if you do use, uh, if you do want to do a wedding, or sorry, a webinar type setup. And I know we're running out of time, or we're already over time, but I'm also running out of time at this point. I'm going to look for maybe two, three more questions, and at that point, then we'll probably go ahead and hop off of here. Um, screen freezing only in big meetings. I host 100 people or more. Yeah, so there might be some issues. You know, if you're having meetings actually freeze and it's not an internet connection, that would be something you want to reach out to Zoom about because that should not be happening. There should really be no version of the Zoom settings uh, that lead to the meetings crashing or freezing. If they are, um, you may want to reach out to your Zoom representative. All right, so that was the same question. Listen, okay. All right, so I think all right, the last question here is how can I share my iPad or iPhone on the share screen? So if you open up the share settings, I'm going to go back to that real quick, and that should wrap it up for us. Let's see here. Where was it? Okay, so on this screen here, when you click on the share screen at the bottom, um, this one right here is how you share your iPhone or iPad via AirPlay. And then this one here is how you share it if you want to plug it into the computer itself. So one of those two options should be available there. Okay. All right. Well, that is, that is all the time I have at this point. I do want to appreciate uh, or say I appreciate anybody who hung around. Actually, there's almost 100 of you still here. So I appreciate that. Thank you so much for hanging around. Hopefully you got some value out of today. Um, one last time, I am just going to go ahead and throw... Uh, those links back into the chat so you do have that uh, of, uh, option available again if you could uh, at the very least you know go follow our Facebook page I think that would be particularly helpful to us if you don't mind um, but you do have the option as well to sign up on our email list and if you do so you will receive more information about business video school like I said we got a really awesome sale um, that we're gonna be talking about this Friday one time only it's a celebration of the fact that we just recently launched our business video school campus which is a new hub where we got all kinds of really cool exciting things happening within the school itself so if you're curious about any of that just make sure you're on our email list and you will hear more about it to come so um, at this point that is all I have for you today I want to thank you so much for joining us uh, this was a lot of fun um, was interesting not having Jeff or Tristan here so I'm appreciating what they uh, what they do behind the scenes at least to help with all the question management for sure um, but hopefully I got through it as much you know as best as we possibly could I want to thank you for being here and, and remember every single Wednesday at this same time so one o'clock Pacific uh, four o'clock Eastern three o'clock Central two o'clock Mountain Time we do one of these business video school webinars where we try to give you about 50 minutes or more of really really quality business video related Related education um, and we will be here again for the coming weeks I think we got the next six or seven of these scheduled at this point so please keep an eye out for them make sure you attend whenever you can um, and thanks for joining us today I really appreciate you being here and I will see you on the next one talk to you then